So we're going to be talking about three different activity diagrams in this video. And basically it's different passes of the same activity. So the first pass is just like the first level of refinement. Then you add more detail to it. You get the second level, then the third level. So our, so this is the first level. This is the second level. And this is the third level. So we'll go back to the first level and explain kind of the context. And basically what you're seeing here is, is the cell phone battery and it's got some um, value that has battery life that is stored. And then five to nine seconds later, it, it will charge and charge 1%. So let's say it was 38, 7% battery. Now it'd be 38 and five to nine seconds later, it would go up to 39. And once you make it to a hundred, it would send the fully charged signal elsewhere. So that is kind of the, the, the purpose of this acti activity and how I would refine it moving forward would be not making it pop-ups like you saw. It would be automatic. So the way to do that would be connecting the activity to the block, so the behavior to the, to the structure. And then what we can do is we can run this block. And you can see that it doesn't ask me right here. It just automatically knows um, to go forth. And then we have this battery life equals battery life plus one. And then it iterates and you can see this number jumping up from zero to one to two to three. So if I go ahead and put in 98, it goes to 99. So then when it gets to hundred, it will jump out as we saw here and complete. So the next thing to do is, is to realize that these actions should be one and the same. Um, while it's charging 1%, you wait that five to nine seconds and the battery life increases by one. I would say that these need to be the same. So that's what we've done in this one. We've actually put those two things together and we can run everything together. As you see there, I also added an input of 96 to start out with. So it goes up by one starting at 96. So it's at 98 right now and jumps around. Additionally, you could go down here, hit show simulation time, and it will show you the actual time of simulation, which can be helpful when you know that you have things like five to nine seconds. So there it, it finished that activity. And I think that we're at a good spot to, to use this. This is the first level of refinement that we're going to start with. And here's where, where we will go to. So we started with just an activity diagram, no structural aspects, to now having a structural aspect and then also having this counter. So our, our, our block here has a value property as well. So we'll just start here and here we go. So first I would add a block, create element block, title this phone battery. I'll just go ahead and create a diagram for that too, BDD, and just throw this in here. And we'll go ahead and throw this in here. We can show it and we'll resize it. And then we'll add our value property. So our value property is a uh, battery life. And I made it of type integer. And so this battery life is recognized by this battery life or the other way around. Uh, so now the only thing left to do is is connect the structure to the behavior. So I just get this and I drag it on top of there. You can see that the act of doing that added that right there. So now I can double click on this and it will jump directly to that. So now when I run this, I'm not done, but uh, you can see that it does not. Oh, so it asked me this question um, that has the pop up. The battery life is less than 100. So yes, the battery life is less than 100. You wait five to nine seconds and then it goes around. So the way that I ran it, I ran it. So now it jumps out. That's how it works. So I ran it with just run. I did not run it with context. So, um, and the difference is, is when I run with context, that's the same thing as running this block right here. So they're the same. So I'll go ahead and run this with context. And now what you're seeing down here is the block itself. So when I run it, you'll see the block and then the activity underneath it. And then it will not ask me the question this time because it, it actually is reading the constraint right there. Um, but the, the problem here is that we're stuck in a loop there. There's like, whatever this value is right here is not changing over time. 
And ultimately, we need to be able to say, you know, after we waited this five to nine seconds, we actually are going from 51 to 50 to, to 52, and then it iterates by one. So it's n equals n plus one. We need to add that in here somewhere. That's not happening right now. So that's kind of our next step. So we'll stop. And I'll, I'll just um, show you the other way to do it is running it from here. I, I said it's exactly the same thing as running with context within this activity. And so I'll just kind of show that. See how it automatically goes goes through. Same sort of problem though. It's It sticks at 50 and there's no iteration. And again, this is what we're trying to add. So I'll stop this so we can edit it. I'll jump in there. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to add a opaque action. So just add that right here. It looks the same as this, but it's not the same. This one right here is a call behavior action. If you go in here, you can see it's an opaque action. So what you can do is um, you can just add math into here. This is not the same thing as math. So we'll say that uh, battery life equals battery life plus one. And then we will just add it into the flow right there. And let's give it a go. So I'm running it with context this time. And wait our seconds. And then it iterates to one right there. So it will continue to iterate. Two. And then three and four. So I'll, I'll go ahead and force it to 98. 99. And then when it gets to 100, it should jump out. There we go. So that's that's what we got, and we did it. So the, the last thing I'd like to show is how we got this five to nine seconds. So we can go in here, we go to constraints, and we've got our constraint that we added. We All we did was click, click create there, and yeah, I'll just make a second constraint that create. Constraint. Oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Create duration constraint. And then I can name this um, duration constraint. So name it whatever. And, and then you can scroll down and have your min and max values. So we'll say this is three seconds to four seconds. There we go. And then we go back. And then you can see that's what I added right here. So. I can unapply that, it's gone, and now we got what we have. So we'll go ahead and start with this and then um, make it look like R3. So what we'll do is we, we, we know that this is an opaque action because we can see that in the specification window. We can also do Alt-B, which is a shortcut to tell us where things are in the containment tree, and we can see that right there, the, the icon is is the same as your opaque action right there. So you can you can see that those are the same. Uh, and then this one right here is a call behavior action um, with a constraint right here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to just bypass this one, the call behavior action, and then just go straight to that. So all we have to do to this is add the five to nine seconds. So we'll go down to constraints, uh, click create, duration constraint and we'll say this is charge time and minimum of oh it's uh, conflicting so charge time two minimum is going to be five seconds maximum is going to be nine seconds and then we can click back now we have our constraint we can apply it oh we can just click close and it makes it on there um, so now we can Alt B to this call behavior action and we can actually remove it completely. So now let's just test it to make sure that it runs as intended before we work with making it look pretty. And I did not run it with, um, let's see, I did not run it with context there like I should have. So it asked me using the pop-up if I run it with context, it then, um, also runs the block which has that value property so that they can tether that value property to that, that right there, that battery life. So I'm gonna go and run with context. This time it will not ask me that question right there. It automatically goes in. We should be waiting five to nine seconds. Here's our simulation time. And it will do it again and it's iterating 
and we'll knock it to 98 and it's iterating to 99. It looks like it's going to work. So when it hits 100, it will jump out of the loop. Okay, so now we know that it, it works properly. Uh, now we want to show, we may want to show it different ways. So we can show our element properties and then edit the compartments and then potentially add the name. So if we wanted to, I forgot what we called it. We called it charge 1%. So what we can do is we go in here and change the name to charge 1%. And then that will show up there. If and then you can, um, if you want to look at it that way, that works. If you don't want to see that, you can make it go away. Uh, also, you can go into your symbol properties, and you can scroll down and change your display mode to show action, show action name, which just shows that instead of your body. So if you're trying to present this to leadership, you can go and just change this value. If you're trying to hide the math behind it and it will still work as anticipated. So those are two ways to kind of show or display the, uh, the opaque action. So with that, um, these two things look the same at this point, R3 and R2, and you are good to go. So hope that helped.